Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce to you a work of our research team on evaluating effects of agricultural drought and flood abrupt alteration on cotton growth. First, let's see the research background. As we know, both water deficit and excess water in soils arising from drought and flood disasters can inhibit cross roots from absorbing water and fertilizing, thus affecting crop growth and yield. Furthermore, due to increasing climate change, the uneven distribution of precipitation within the year facilitates the occurrence of drought and flood of rapid alteration. We use a brief DFAA to indicate drought and flood abrupt alteration. DFAA events occur objectively across the growing period of local crops. However, the impacts on crop years differ from rows of individual drought and flood stress. That means what is the influence of DFAA on crop years? At present, we don't know. It's great influence or more serious influence or light influence on crop years is need to be studied. So this work provides guidance for monitoring and reduce cotton DFAA disasters by identifying the high risk regions and periods. More importantly, by examining the influence of DFAA disasters on cotton responding to drought and flood. Our purpose is to provide regional scale evidence for developing comprehensive planning for irrigation and drainage soils to improve water use efficiency in agriculture. Let's see our technical role. We uh, choose the middle and lower Yangtze River channel as our case study to identify and analyze cotton DFA events, then further to explore the potential influence of DFA on cotton yield in response to drought and flooding at a regional scale. We shall first consider the influence of drought and flood, and then those two all together to influence on the cotton yield in our research area. So first we calculate the index of drought and flood, then plus together to form the drought and flood abrupt alteration index. Then we calculate the influence of this index to cotton yield. Cotton yield includes two parts. The first part is each trend change. The other part is the change caused by climate change. So we calculate cotton yield driven by cotton climate yield through the difference of uh, the active observed cotton yield. That means the total cotton yield minus the trend yield then obtained the cotton climate yield. Now our methodology. First, identification of cotton DFA events. We improved the traditional index SPEI to obtain the standardized antecedent precipitation evap transpiration index, SAPEI, as we can see from this formula. First, we calculate ETC. ETC is the daily cotton potential evap transpiration. Then we calculate the water budget W. At the last, we obtained APEI. APEI, we can see we calculate the difference of water budget daily on consideration of KI. KI is the decay constant to quantify the contribution fraction of precipitation on day I. Actually, it is a weight to consider the daily water budget difference. The improved index SAPEI is obtained from the traditional index APEI. First, the probability density distribution 
of a three-parameter logistic function was used to fit the API service over the study period. Then the improved index was obtained from the standard volume of this function. Here, give the volume for daily drought and daily flood conditions. It is index of SAPEI less than minus 0 0.5 shows the daily drought. Otherwise, daily flood conditions occur. Then we calculate the DFAA intensity. As we can see from this formula, it is calculated by plus together the index of flood and drought. So we first calculate the index flood and the index drought separately, then plus them together to obtain the intensity of DFI event. So we give the volume 0 0.5 corresponds to the absolute volume of fresh oils for drought and flood. That means SAPEI less than minus 0 0.5 is drought, greater than 0 0.5 is flood. A cotton drought event was identified when the drought conditions last for at least 10 days. That means index of SAPEI showed less than minus 0 0.54 continuous 10 days. Then we can say a cotton drought event happened. But for flood conditions, shall be a cotton flood event was defined as three consecutive days on the flood conditions. Last, we calculated the cotton climate yield. Cotton climate yield is consists of two parts. The first part is the climate yield. The other part is the trend yield. So, Cotton climate yield is calculated by the total yield minus the trend yield. We use the case study area to do the analysis. We now see the results. This one shows us the comparison between the empirical distribution of the flood and drought index APEI compared with the theoretical distribution. We can see the red line is the theoretical distribution. The blue line is our calculation, APEI distribution. The two match it very well. Then we calculate the trend of the frequencies during the past several decades. The three lines we can see uh, respectively DFAA, DF, DF means drought to flood alternation. And the third one is FD, FD means flood to drought alternation. The three lines for each uh, specific region. We can say only one has the significant trend. The fingers show us drought to flood alternation frequency was larger than flood drought alternation frequency. The temporal trend of cotton DFA, DF, and FD frequencies were not significant in most regions. Only one region has the significant trend. This one shows us the frequencies and the coefficient of variation of the drought and the flood abrupt alternation in different decades during the whole cotton growth period. The most recent decades we can see here, has seen the greatest number of cotton, DFAA, DF, and FD in recent decades, as compared with the formal years. The interdecade fluctuations of cotton DFAA and DF frequencies peaked in 1970s, we can see here. 
the frequency of cotton DF was higher than that of cotton FD in all decades. The variability of cotton FD was greater than that of cotton DF in all the decades except 2010. This finger shows us the frequencies of DFA at the different cotton growth stages. We can see cotton DFA events are more likely to occur during the early and the middle stages than during the later stages. Cotton at the early stages was more likely to suffer DF events than at the two later stages. DF drought to flood in the early stages than the middle and the later stages. It's very interesting that the cotton DF and FD events had adverse in the growth stage distributions. Which two show us? For DF, we can say the sum much more than the natives. But for FD, the early stages much less than the later stages. So inverse distribution is very interesting. Now this one shows us the distribution proportions of duration of drought and flood over abrupt alternation during the whole cotton growth period. The numbers displayed in the finger indicate the frequencies of cotton DFII, DF, and FD. We can say the long term events takes larger part. So long term events was still the major embodied form for cotton DFA events. The DF frequency exceeded the FD frequencies in each duration category. We can see DF, the events, more than FD in each category. So this one show us the DF frequency exceeded FD frequency. This one show us the correlation coefficient for DFA flood and DFA drought. When cotton drought occurred more frequently, cotton DFA events would be more likely to occur. That means the cotton DFA events are much more at the stage of cotton drought. This finger shows us the number of significant negative correlations and positive correlations for DFA flood and DFA drought respectively. The DFA flood and DFA drought relations vary with growth stages, so change along the different stages. This is probably because the cotton DFA events occurred frequently in the early stages for DF, DFA flood, these events occurred much more than later stages. But flood drought events occurred frequently in later stages, we can see here. So we obtained the different features for our case study, so we can conclude it. The index we improved in visual work is applicable for simulating cotton drought and flood, and is efficient in capturing the effects of drought and flood on cotton yield. The SAPEI based approach will characterize the cotton DFA events, especially capturing numerous short term events less than 20 days. We can see uh, just from a thing show us different categories, long term to short term categories for DFA, DF, FD, different events happened. In the most even decades over the past six decades, the frequency of cotton DFA events in our research area, including both cotton DF and FD events, reached a historical high. That means the change of drought and flood influence on cotton yield. The only significant trend of cotton DFA events was found 
in one research area, and it just was upward trend. But other areas has allowed significant trend. This research imply a near-term high risk of cotton DFA disasters. Also, cotton DF and FD events differed greatly in their high-risk regions. The northern part was considered the most cotton DFA prone region. The early and late growth stages of cotton had relatively low risks of cotton FD and DF respectively. Relations between cotton DFA frequency and drought frequency was very significant and positive in all areas in our research area, demonstrating that more cotton drought events tend to result in more cotton DFA events. The last finger show us the features. Effects of drought and flooding on cotton climate yet was significantly stronger in the non DFA years than in DFA years. This is mostly important. It is different from our traditional idea. At last, we will give our most important conclusion. At our regional school, it is confirmed that the occurrence of cotton drought flood abrupt alternation can reduce the yet reduced effects of cotton drought and flood events separately which is fairly in accordance with previous field experiment reports. That's all. Thank you for your attention.